You know, the toilet is the most used plumbing fixture in the home, and sometimes it can just wear out. So I thought a little anatomy lesson was in order. We get a lot of letters and emails about leaky toilets, so we anatomy do. should serve us well. So no matter what the size or shape of the toilet tank, inside it has to do two things. First, it has to be able to flush the water out of the tank. So when you lift a tank lever, this flap arises. Now the water that's in the tank now will evacuate down through that hole in the bottom. It goes down through this passageway right here into the flush rim. Water comes into here, down into the bowl, and flushes the toilet. Okay. Now, once that's finished and the flapper closes, we now have to refill the tank. So this is the fill valve right here, and now water will continue to rise into the tank until it lifts this float and shuts it off. And this hasn't really changed that much, the mechanism inside a toilet for no, a lot of years. It, it really hasn't. This is really one of the first water regulators right here that I would have worked on. <laughs> Cold water come in through here. It's a brass unit. And there's a piston right here, and that would open and close to let the water in. Gotcha. And the way it was activated was the float. It's a copper float. As the water rose, it would lift that float and ultimately shut that piston off. I have never seen one with a copper float no, before. No, This is old. That's, it is old. All right. Now, over time, it transitioned to plastic. So this is the plastic water regulator. And here's the float right here. Now, these floats were always tricky. You had to get them adjusted right. And to do that, you often had to bend this brass rod to get sure. the level correct. Right. Nowadays, this is what you see in almost every toilet where the float is now an integral part of this water regular or ball cock. So the water would rise and make that float shut that valve off right here. And to make an adjustment, you just have to open and close the spring clip to slide it up and down. Okay, so now that we understand the parts, let's talk about leaks. And let's start with the one where the toilet is just constantly running, where the water's coming out of the tank, into the bowl, the, over and the over. The most common by far. Right. First place I would look is down inside the tank. You, you know, you lift that tank lever and now the flap is supposed to drop properly. And sometimes it doesn't. And so now, just imagine it being a little bit of a skew. Now that water's going to keep on running. Right. That means it'll never shut off. This fill valve will just keep on running. That water then goes down into the bowl. And oftentimes, people just jiggle the handle, That's and they right. that fixes it. That's right. The other thing is that the fill valve could either be worn or misadjusted. Let's say that this was adjusted in such a way that the water level went so high that now it went right up and over the height of this overflow tube. Now the water would keep on running down into the bowl because this overflow tube bypasses that flapper. Not such a bad thing, though, because without this, the water would come up out of the tank and all over the floor. Right. So this serves a purpose. That's right. Now, but if you have that condition, I've got to warn you, sometimes it can lead to a leak on the outside of the tank. And it's not really a leak. It's the fact that this cold water is coming in the tank all the time and condensation forms on the outside of the tank. Something that's going to happen on a hot, muggy day. Absolutely. All right, but what if you've got a real leak that happens all year round? It's dripping down onto the floor. From the tank? Sure. Then you need to rebuild it and take the tank right off the bowl. Let me show you. Before we take the tank off the bowl, we need to get the water out of the tank. So that starts by turning the water off right here at the shutoff valve. This is the pipe that comes out of the wall. Once that is off, I would flush the toilet. The water would leave the tank. And I'm going to break this connection right here. Sometimes you need a pair of pliers. All right, a little bit of water might drop, so you want to rag underneath it. Now there's always going to be a little bit of water at the bottom of this tank. We need to get rid of it. So what I use is a turkey baster where I'll sort of pull it up this way and dump it. But that's another way. A wet vac just pulls that water right out. Okay. All right, so once that's gone, we now can break these brass bolts that are down inside here. So with a very large blade screwdriver on the top of the bolt heads. So now with a screwdriver at the top, and now we take a half inch open end wrench and loosen the nuts. Now this has got three of them. Some of them only have two. Sometimes they don't come off this easy, too. All right, two more. OK, so all those bolts are loose. So now we can take out the fill and flush valves. As you can see, there are five potential leak points, the three bolts, this spud right here, and the fill valve. So we're going to replace it all. So there's a large nut right here. Yep, hold that. Okay, there's that one. Take that right out. Now we loosen the fill valve. Just hold back against me. Okay, just pull that out. I'll push the bolts through, and we're ready to rebuild. 
So yeah. Kevin, this is a kit that has everything we need. Here's our fill valve right here, and we can adjust the height of that fill valve depending on the size of the tank and the height of the float mm -hmm. right there. And this is the flush valve. And if it was a really short tank, we may have to cut this overflow. So other than a few adjustments, is it a universal kit? Yeah, absolutely. And how much does it cost? Like about 20 bucks. At that price, it makes sense to change everything. All right. So now we're going to put our fill valve in first. So I'm going to tip that up. I just need the nut. OK, snug up the fill valve. All right, now the flush valve. Yeah, I'll, and I'll get it from this side. Just hold it in place, right? I'm just going to snug that up, Kev. Okay, now this is a spud gasket. makes a watertight seal between the tank and bowl. And now I need to put these bolts through. It's a brass bolt with a rubber washer. Put all three through. And now I need brass washers. Hold, it, hold back, thank you. All right, just snug up the last of the bolts, and now we can put the tank back on. All right, just guide those bolts down. Okay, now there's another rubber washer underneath, another metal, and a wing nut. Okay, tighten yours up, Kevin, but don't tighten too much. You don't want to crack the tank. Okay. Make sure it's square. Good. Okay, the refill tube goes into the overflow. And you can actually see the overflow height. It's right where I want it to be, just below that tank lever so no water would come out through the front. If it were too high, you could just cut that down. Absolutely. Okay, and the last thing to do once the water is on is to adjust this float so we get the water level height correct, just about one inch below that overflow. All right, we are back in business. Thank you, Richard. Nothing to it.